Uh, it's the rollback in the morning. Um, uh, kind of, kind of. What do you got? Because I got, I got nothing good at least. I got something. All right. So, um, so you work out every day, right? Or like how often? Uh, about five out of five days a week. Five days a week, yeah. And, but you, you like, you do like oh, one day I'm gonna run, one day I'm gonna do like arms, one day I'm gonna do legs. Like you do that, right? Yeah. Like you pace them out. All right. Yeah. So. I don't really, I don't really do that. Like I work out sporadically. Like I get, I get, uh, I go in seasons. Okay. And uh, I, I hate it because I hate working out, but I hate the fact that after I finish working out, I feel like insanely better. Uh huh. <laughs> and I go like, God damn it. The fitness people were right. Yeah. Um, but in the past couple of days, Oh God, I, I, I've worked out on my arms so much. And I'm so sore from both arms. And you know what I've been doing? What? I got the new Nintendo Switch uh, sports game, the, the, the Wii Sports sequel. That's why your arms are tired? Yeah. I've been playing bowling and tennis. You... And like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm so sore, man. Like, it's, oh, God. Like, but look at these guns. Like, my guns are going <laughs> to. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You would. You would get exhausted from fucking Wii Sports. Oh, my God. I'm not judging no, like, you, camera. I'm not judging no, like, at all. No, like, for real. It just came out, and I was like, and I was like, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll check it out. You know, I'll play a couple of games of bowling. And I'm playing bowling, and I'm having a time, uh, I'm having a ball, and after, like, five games, my, my right arm gets so sore that I start changing it to my left arm. And now I'm just, oh, from both arms. Oh, oh God, like, uh, shot but you know what but but no pain no gain right like it's it's uh yeah so so we're pretty much the same that's what i'm trying to say oh my god no i you know i always thought uh because that was one of the big things when nintendo first made the wii right or the the yeah, yeah. it was like oh look at the, how great it is for fitness yeah shut up that's just so you can market it to parents and like they'll be like oh my kid's gonna play video games and get healthier bullshit it's fun, okay. It's fun. You should get it, and we should play like online, like we can. Uh, you know, maybe we should. I don't. I can't think. When was the last time we actually used the the switch? I've never used actually the switch. Like maybe like twice. Nikki's the one yeah. that's the, the the big video game player. <laughs> you should get it because like it's it's fun to just like have it like uh, like I feel like if you have a at a party or like you have like family over or something, I feel like that's a fun game to have. Like it's just. It's got bowling, tennis. Um, I think it's got soccer, and it's got like some others. Um, but mostly, I've been playing just bowling and tennis. You know what you just reminded me of? I think but, maybe the next time, the next chance we have, uh, the next chance we have, I think I'm gonna get Nikki Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is so fun, but it's you know, very like, addictive. It's addictive, yeah. It's addictive in the no because it's long lasting. Like you can play it for like ten minutes a day. Mm -hmm. but you'll play it every day. Like, that's the thing. For years, for decades to come. Yeah. Like, I still check up on my island, like, every other day. Yeah. Oh. It's fun. Yeah. Is it, like, yeah is, so, it like, is it like is it like Super Minecraft? It's, uh, no, it's less, uh, I guess it's less open, but it is more cute. So, I guess that's the thing. Anyways, yeah. So, I'm, I'm going to try to, like, you know, not to work out too much because, like, I, I don't want to get too buff with, like, yeah, with, that's like, the problem. Sports. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's, problem. that's uh, that, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah, you so. you, you want to be able to cross without having these guns. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't want to. Yeah, yeah I don't want to. Uh, this God, is an this audio podcast. <laughs> 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 For you viewers at home, check out like flex really hard, and you can see like the bulges in his arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't you didn't have to insult me like that like what i'm not insulting you you have arms you have bulging have, arms right now yes have, look you, they're right there i am uh i i got skinny arms i got uh, it's weird because like my body type is like imagine spongebob like i'm like this but then like my arms and legs are like really thin so yeah or like the closest is like it's like i have a body like dwight from the office like that that's my body type like it's but it's like that okay for what it's worth though like i don't see anyone coming out like to try and fuck with you like like no one would be like that guy i can take him to fight I, I don't so i'm like six 
because I'm like six three. People don't know I'm a softie. Like they just <laughs> you're no like no like I take I take public transportation like really often, and I've never try I've never been no one's tempted to rob me, and I'm yeah. pretty sure it's because of that. They don't know so, that your spirit animal is a, is a is a care bear. They don't know that shit, and they'll never know. That's why my friends always always ask me to walk them to their cars. <laughs> they're like, you, you got, you're, you at least look scary. You're the, you have the look of it. You know, maybe you're not, but you have the look. I hope. I hope. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't shaved in a while, so maybe it's that. Keep, keep, keep that up. Get the beard as long as you, as big as you can. Nah, I can't. Like, it, it, after a certain point, it just stops growing. So I just, I just keep it at, at like a certain point. I don't know. Maybe someday. Speaking of magnificent beards, let's talk about the last thing. Oh, God, not this hunk of shit. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You got this? <laughs> you got this. Or do you want to- Thank you for welcoming us into your headphones. My name is Chama. And I'm asleep. And reviewing this. the lost city this <laughs> is the rollback so the lost city follows a reclusive romance novelist who was sure nothing could be worse than getting stuck on a book tour with her cover model until a kidnapping attempt sweeps them both into a cutthroat jungle adventure proving life can be so much stranger and more romantic than any of her paperback fiction so the lost city starring sandra bullock channing tatum daniel Radcliffe, brad pitt and um, you know, with a lot of a, a, a lot of very colorful uh, side characters, um, I don't think we've had a big, strong comedy in like a long time. Like I think the last one that I can remember is possibly something like Booksmart or like Game Night or or Blockers or something like that. I think uh, it's been a while since we had like a good big co- big studio comedy, and it's still uh, been it's a while th- since we've had it. This is not yeah. the film. <laughs> oh well, well, okay. Let me. I think we're gonna we're gonna stand on like different sides of the spectrum. We really are. I swear on this we are. one, but you know you can't deny that you know after the pandemic, you know we've had movies, we've had you know action movies, we had superhero movies, we've had the Oscar movies, but we haven't had, let's call it an attempt to make a a, a big uh, comedy or a big romantic comedy. So that's that's what we're that's what we're presented with here. Let's see how we we, we reacted to it. So. Uh, I think you have stronger thoughts on this one, so I'm going to let you go first. But go ahead. What do you think of... Uh... I, I'm going to quote myself. <laughs> Please do. And so, The Lost City, a.k.a. Sandra Bullock, are you okay? Are you okay? Did they actually kidnap you to m- force you to make this film? Because if she came out tomorrow and said publicly, I didn't want to do this movie, I was forced to by contractual obligations, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? That makes sense. That explains so much. What didn't you like about this? <clears throat> what? The only... Okay. Mate, I... Oh, God, where do I start? I'm so sorry. Like, where do I start? The thing is, and I, I, I hate to say this, Central Bullock's the problem in this film. Because I feel like Channing Tatum tried. I feel like like uh, Brad Pitt tried. Daniel Radcliffe tried. Everyone else tried. But Central Bullock, I couldn't get into her humor. She felt dry. She felt... She felt about as dry as sand in the Sahara Desert, like just dry, but like in, in not in a good, funny way. Like I've, I like Sandra Bull. Like I like her films for the most part. I like Miss Congeniality. Uh, even uh, uh, the proposal, like like she's done good comedy, and Ten Tatum is a good dance partner for her, I think, because he's good at comedy with random people. Like he's shown he can. Yeah, but this is not the film. Like I want my twenty two dollars back. This is bullshit. I'm sorry. It just it was not good. It wasn't funny. I laughed once. And that wasn't because of a joke she made. It was because I walked back from the restroom and I walk in on Sandra Bullock trying to remove leeches from Chang Tatum's ass. That's it. That's the only time I laughed. Okay. So I'm sorry. It just she ah oh man. I'm sorry, mate. Like, I, I feel like this film is not good and she's the problem with it. 100%. All right. Um, I hear you. I disagree, but I hear you. Um, 
No, um, if you if you go back and you see you see uh, Sandra Bullock's history in the in the rom com genre, you'll see that most of her performances are like this. Like she is kind of the straight man. She is the reactor to the funny that is happening in in the movie. If you see the movie The Heat. Uh, Melissa McCarthy is the loud one and she's the one that kind of has to like stand in the corner and be like, holy shit, what is happening? And that's where I think the comedy comes from. Her kind it, it, it's like office humor. Like it's, it's a, it is dry and it is awkward, but I think that's what makes it uh, funny. And she is a good partner for Channing Tatum because remember when Channing Tatum first came out and they tried to sell, sell him as, uh, you know, as an action hero in GI, in GI Joe or like as a, as a comedy partner and things like Dear John and, and and and, th- and things like that, and then and we were all like, the, 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 this guy looks like one of the thumb people from Spy Kids. Like, what what is he? <laughs> and then he did, and then he did Twenty One Jump Street. Then we realized, oh my god, he's a fucking himbo. Like, there it is. <laughs> That's your stitch. <laughs> Stick to it. And after he stuck to it, I think he's been wonderful because he's amazing in both Jump Street movies. I think he's great in like in like a movie like She's the Man. And then in this, uh, he's great. Hell, it, 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 even the little moment that he had in uh, in Free Guy <laughs> was really funny uh, because he played like that kind of like quieter uh, character. But I thought he was really funny in this. Yeah, he was. Uh, he he had a lot of really good moments. That part where he goes like, "You're like a human mummy," <laughs> like my theater was howling. My theater right. was fucking howling, and then, and then everyone was like, was, was, was like, "Mummies are human, mate." Like, like, oh my god! And the fact that he kept like saying words wrong, like, oh god! Like, like I was kind of waiting for Sandra Bullock to just like look at the camera, like, look at this fucking asshole, like, <laughs> like that's that, what that probably would have been funny. That actually probably would have been funny. Yeah. So no, I, uh, I, I understand where you're coming from. Like, maybe that kind of humor is not for everyone. Uh, but it worked for me. I felt. Uh, uh, well, I do agree that maybe Sandra Bullock was not like the best person that could have, that that could have done this, but maybe someone else could have played the character even a little better. Uh, I'm fine with what they gave us, especially because I was reading, and apparently the Channing Tatum character originally was supposed to be Ryan Reynolds, and I don't think it would have worked the best. Yeah. I feel like Ryan Reynolds would have done like the same thing that he's been doing for the past like six, seven movies. And I like Channing Tatum in roles like this. Like I, I like him playing the himbo. I don't mind him yeah. being a himbo. I just think like Sandra Bullock. The thing is, I the other film she was funny. I felt like she had more personality in this film. Her person, her personality was just too dry. Like it was too like she looked like she didn't want to be there. Like she didn't. Um, okay. And I, and it's a shame because it's a good premise. It's somewhat original. I think I don't know. Right, I don't can't think of the top of my head of a film that's very similar to this. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, which one? Romancing the Stone, 1984. Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner did an almost, uh, an almost exactly the same movie. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like this, but it's not like, how do I explain this? It's not, it doesn't feel like a ripoff. It, it, it just feels like, oh, this is Romancing the Stone for, you know, the millennials in Gen Z. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I think this one is funnier. <laughs> I think this one is funnier than that one. But the thing about the, the original one is that, it's really cool because it's filmed on like an actual jungle. It's filmed, it's filmed on like a real thing. Like this one, you can tell like it's a green screen most of the time. Um, so that takes me out. So that's why I like the original because it was a product of the times. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I like when, when the movie started. I was like, oh, this is romancing the stone again. Like, and and it's fine. You know, it's a, uh, it's like uh, it's like when I saw Booksmart and, and and I went, oh, this is like this is like a uh, super bad, but you know, for a new generation, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's like the main, the main comparison that I draw because it is also about like a writer that gets you know kidnapped and taken to a jungle and you know someone has to come and like help her. Um, so it is similar, um, but this one has you know some things that do work. Uh, I know you want to talk about Daniel Radcliffe, so if you want, we can talk about Daniel Radcliffe. Wait, okay. Can I say one more thing? And I don't yeah, want yeah, this yeah. to like drown out the whole rest of the episode, but like just an yeah. acknowledgement or something. So news came out very recently that Sandra Bullock was going to be taking a step away from acting to do more parenting. She wants to be home more, which well deserved. I think we can all understand that. Yeah, totally. I I I can't help but think in the back of my head: is that why she didn't try that hard in this one? She would she'd rather be home right now. Maybe. I think, well, well, was this movie delayed? I feel uh, like it was. 
Was it? Let me see here. Uh, it was originally said that where's the COVID information? Uh, no, project was announced in October 2020, so we're well into COVID territory when that happened. With Sandra Bullock joining as a producer and star, and Tim, Chang Tim joined in December. Uh, it was filmed in the Dominican Republic between May and August of 2021. So, no, no, this was definitely a, an in the middle of COVID film, but just like, ugh. Anyway, yeah. uh, for what it's okay. worth, Ch- Channing Tatum was funny, though. Like, it, I'm not saying he doesn't have comedic chops. He does. That's why I'm shocked that this film didn't make me laugh more. That's a lie. There were two times when I laughed. Two big times. That leap scene, and then the scene where fucking Weatherman's son, Brad Pitt, gets shot in the head. I fucking love that she goes, uh, that, that she goes, how, how are you so handsome? It's like, my dad, my dad was a weatherman. <laughs> like, what like, does that have to do with anything? Like, but like, that was actually funny. Like, yeah, Brad Pitt and Chadwick Tatum had more chemistry. If the whole film had been the two of them buddy copping, trying to save her up until the third act, I would, you know what? Money well spent because they were funny. Not, together. not gonna lie. It, it was pretty funny. Like, I, I, I love uh, uh, this scene where, when he when he's introducing uh, the Brad Pitt character and, and he goes here here he is on my phone Jack Trainer is like his name is Jack Trainer or is he a trainer No that's how I save everyone on my phone Jack Trainer uh, Li- Li- Lisa Butt stuff you know he can- Jane <laughs> Mom <laughs> yeah like <laughs> oh God and then and then he like calls him and it's like this guy can find anyone it's, it's like do you have her phone No does does she have a smartwatch Yes just look up on like find my find my smart <laughs> Like, yeah. oh my god, you're so smart. Like, like, uh, yeah. like that was the normal thing to do. Oh, and then when they when they meet at the airport and like he gets into the car and the car's really small. Oh my god. Oh no, you're right. A- every second with like the two of them was is cool. pretty funny. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, I was, I was just agreeing with you. Hey, yeah. No, no, no. I just uh there was also a funny scene where he's like, you know. Uh, I'll have it back to you in 48 hours or next rescue is free. Why is there going to be a next rescue? <laughs> like, you'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so like, no, but I, I'm sorry, man. Like, I had to tee off. Like, I'm sorry, Sandra, you weren't funny in this one, which is a damn shame because I know you're better than this. Uh, um, but do you want to talk about uh, the little boy who tried to be evil? What do you think of Daniel Brackliffe in this movie? Because I thought he was really funny. I thought he was funny, and also the fact that he, like, this film, you know, he could be a villain if he wanted to. Like, not just a comedy villain, but, like, a villain villain, because, like, he has this odd delivery. The beard works for him, and also, when he gets angry and his face is red and you see the veins popping out of his forehead, it's like, oh, shit, he could be menacing. Yeah. Like, his um, stature does has nothing to do with the fact that he gets in your face. I like how they made that joke at the end when when they go like they go like we we found this little English boy, but then we realized that he was a grown man because he has a beard. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh uh, man, like that that was really funny. Um, no, I thought he was good, and uh, I I I'm glad that they didn't they didn't fold and made like a Harry Potter reference. Like I'm glad that he's being allowed to play a different kind of character. Yeah. Um. So that's good. Um, so I thought he was he was really fun in this. Like like I, I like how that joke they had that like his name is uh, Ashley. I think that was his name or what's his name? Uh, Abigail. He's, 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 no, Abigail. His name yeah. was Abigail. And they and they go like it's a it's a gender neutral name. Yeah, like 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 my, my, my brother Leslie is the one. Like, <laughs> like that uh, was the, that I thought was funny. Um, yeah. Um, so he was funny. Uh, Brad Pitt being killed off. I did not see that coming. I mean, I thought he was going to come in at the very end. Yeah, no, no. I thought I thought he was going to be like throughout, but it, it makes sense that like for the gag, they just killed him. Oh, God, but again, yeah. if they had just saved him and kept him throughout the whole film, I wouldn't have been mad. I think it would have been much happier. Yeah. Um, so yeah, was your crowd laughing? Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Anyway. Was your crowd laughing like yes. during the movie? Really? Like howling. Wow. Not gonna my, lie. They my were friend like, was very wow. silent. Really? Like it, they, there wasn't a lot to laugh at. Like, like they laughed much more than I did, but like it wasn't like crazy. No, my crowd was howling. There was also a baby. Uh, the baby was crying throughout the throughout the start. I, I don't know if he just if he just stopped crying or if they just took him out, but 
Maybe they give him some uh, Benadryl or Tylenol. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe don't, drug your, like, don't, drug, don't drug your kids, uh, people. Maybe they just punch them and, like, knock them out. Um, you're, you're in favor of child violence, Trevor? No, I'm, I'm not in favor of child violence, but I am in favor of, you know, movie theaters being a baby-free zone. Jeez. You know what? No, I'm not against that. Can you imagine <laughs> that? Adam... Yeah. No, go first. No, no. Go, go, you first. I wasn't going to say anything. I was just, I was just going like, to keep the... What if... I don't like... I, I, I don't like dead air. That, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> what if uh, there was a movie theater chain, 21 and over only, but open bar? Shit, that would be awesome. They have the opposite here. What do you mean? They have a, they have a, a, a children uh, specific uh, like a screening room. Yeah. Guess what? The, yeah. They do... Um, like the the chairs are more far away from each other. There is a um, slide mm-hmm. with like a with like a ball pit. Oh, no! It's uh, I've never been inside, and it sounds horrible. I mean, if that's where, well, are there no parents allowed in that one? No, parent. No parents are allowed. Pa- parents are encouraged, but uh, I think they prefer if you bring a kid. Like, no, well, like that I, would suck, but like <laughs> no, it would suck because like cause, like you're trying to like you know watch a movie and then there's a kid you know just running around the, the thing. No, it would suck. You know what? No, you know what would be hilarious? What if that was right. like the place to drop off your kids? Where are you gonna go watch an actual film? Or like you rent that place out for like a kid's birthday party, but like the kids are playing and you're watching The Exorcist. That's that's how that's why they do it. <gasps> that's kind of yeah. cool. I mean, if you're a kid. No, I mean, imagine scaring the shit out of a bunch of kids while playing The Exorcist while they're all trying to play. Oh. I think they did. I think they did that in like in like a theater. Like they, they accidentally showed Hereditary instead of like another movie. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about yeah. that one. That happened <laughs> they here. Gave, they gave everyone <laughs> refunds. Yeah, I mean that. I saw that movie and I was like, what, 24, 25, I think. <laughs> and like that was one of the most traumatizing experiences of my life. <laughs> imagine being a little kid. Right. Yeah. It, that's, it's going to toughen them up real quick. Oh my god! It didn't toughen me up at all. <laughs> if anything, if anything, it just made my my humanity more fragile. If anything, it made me softer. If anything, it made me more empathetic. Oh god! So, so the lost city. What yeah. things did? Okay, so uh, it's it's damn obvious. You know, I didn't really like it. You did. What are some things that you didn't like though? Because we have been you have been singing the, quite a bit of its praises. Is there anything you wish they had done, or anything that they could have done better? Maybe uh look, I don't want to sound like one of those pretentious like film guys. Like I, I really don't want to, but as we talk I, on our film podcast. Yeah, as we do on our film podcast. By the way, like did, did, did y'all get the A24 membership? Because I fucking did. Um yeah, um speaking of pretentious uh per people, um something that really distracted me, and this is becoming more and more distracting to me. Like it didn't used to bother me like at all before. But I really miss movies that were being shot like on location and like, or like at least tried. Like, there's so much CG in the and green and green screen in the background. And I understand, you know, I understand, you know, you have a budget, you want to hire like all these actors, and you have to like, get, yeah. Um, but you can tell, and that that's a little distracting to me. And like, I, I don't know, I, I I just wish movies that I miss movies that, that that are being shot on like an actual location. And I understand this is cheaper. I understand it's easier. I understand you disturb less uh, people. You don't have to pay taxes and all that. But I really miss that. And the the only thing that I really didn't like about the movie was um, the actress who played uh, uh, Sandra Bullock's uh, uh, agent, Davine Joy Randolph who is a good actress. She is a funny person. Like she, she was really good in, in Dolomite is my name. She was really good in, uh, in office Christmas party. Like I've seen her in things. She's really funny. She was given nothing funny to say or do in this movie. Uh, the whole movie. She's just, she, she just plays the agent at the start. She's looking for her and she finds her at the end and she's not giving anything funny. To, this is a funny person. Like, she's a comedian. She's given, I, I, if you didn't tell me, I wouldn't believe it. No, no. Like, uh, have you seen a Dolomite is my name? No. On Netflix. No. Uh, so it's like it, it's with it's like Eddie Murphy's like big return to like to like the screen, mm-hmm. and it's it's wonderful. Like he, he uh, oh god, it, the ending makes me cry. 
but like it's also like really funny and she's in it and she's great in it and she can do both dramatic and funny so she was given nothing and i was so mad during the movie i'm like this is a funny person like <laughs> give her funny things to say uh so that oh. was the only thing that i was that i was like she like she could have been anyone uh so why cast you know someone that you're not gonna let them be funny like like i i i, I don't know how all that process worked but but uh, all she did was like be worried at the start be concerned for her to, throughout the movie and then she's paired up with sandra bullock she's paired up with channing tatum she's paired up she's paired up with oscar from the office um i know and he has goat. a name yeah and 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 the goat like that's a funny like they're in a cargo play it's a funny premise like do something funny with it and they gave her nothing they gave her nothing do you think part of the reason why this film would have been better with ryan reynolds instead of because i don't know channing tatum i don't know his if he just makes no, the scene funny i think i think channing tatum was perfect for this like i think he would have i think uh he was he better than ryan reynolds in the in, the, in, in this role but does channing tatum riff because i know ryan reynolds like that's part of his shtick is when you give him a script you make sure you include some parts in there where it's like all right just here's what they're going to talk about y'all like fit in everything in the middle because he can riff he can go he can shoot from the hip yeah. Do you think? Yeah, he. Uh, they give he that? can. Mm-hmm. No, no, he, no, he can't. But like the whole thing with Ryan Reynolds right now is that uh, is that all of his performances are like he can riff, but he's also very confident. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the, this character is not confident at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, he needed to be that hembo character. He needed to be like that, uh, a, a little bit unsure of himself. He needed to, and also he he has like he has heart. Like he has <laughs> a, he has a he has a good softer uh, presence. That I think Channing Tatum does better, and I I don't know if Channing Tatum can riff, but I believe he is at least at least twenty percent in real life like this character is. Because remember remember when those Sony emails were leaked? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. Um, one of the emails that was leaked was uh, was uh, an email from uh, Channing Tatum to the president of Sony uh, when he got the notice that Twenty Two Jump Street became the highest grossing R rated film of all time. So he heard that news and he sent an email to the president of Sony go- going like, we fucking did it, man. Hell fucking yeah. And, it, and it's like two pages of just, yeah, in like a <laughs> word document. <laughs> so I believe a hundred percent that Channing Tatum is like that. Like, like that's like the fact that that's like an actual email that he, he was like, I should, I should email the president of Sony and be like, hell yeah, man, we did it. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Like it's two pages of just yeah, fuck yeah. Like I believe that that's him. No. So um yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think that if Ryan Reynolds would have been it, it, it would have been like in a spiritual sequel to the proposal. Like it would have been uh them being uh you know bitchy towards each other. And in this one, they are bitchy towards each other, but in a different way. Uh like you almost feel bad for Channing Tatum after he like spills his his heart out and is like and you know, tells her how he feels. Um, yeah. What movies have like not spiritual successors, but are like two actors that constantly find each other again, and they constantly do great work. Hmm. There are some, but I can't think of them. Right, Ryan, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone. Right. Uh, I think them. I think uh, Keanu Reeves. We're on a writer. Oh, uh, who plays Bellatrix Lestrange? Um, Helena Bonham uh, Carter and Johnny Depp. Helena Carter, Johnny Depp, maybe. They constantly uh, find each other again. Yeah, they keep. They just keep bumping into each other. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but no. Uh, but yeah, maybe Ryan Reynolds and Sandra. Oh well, no, I guess you're right. Channing Tatum maybe fingers. But you know what? Either way, nothing's going to change the fact this film is to me. I'm sorry, that's me vomiting, folks. Yeah, I think I, I, think, I think they got that. Uh, did you saw with did, did you saw with Nikki? Yeah. What did she think? She hated it less. All right. <laughs> she she just liked it less than I did. Like, uh, I think she. I don't know. Actually, you know what? That's a very good question here. Live on the, <laughs> live on there, folks. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a quick thing. Let's see here. <laughs> Is she not there with you? No. Oh, yeah, but she's in the other room, and I don't want to get up because my legs are dying because I just worked out. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I I I know what working out is like. You know, I've been I've been doing it for like the past. Hey boo, quick yesterday question. Yesterday today. What did you think of the Lost City? Real quick. Well, like, what? Like, did you like it or did you hate it? Like, real quick. You didn't like it. 
She didn't like it. Ah, okay. Love you, boo. Bye bye. She says that she thought it would have been a fine movie to watch at home, like on Netflix, but for a movie theater, it sucked. You know what? I don't disagree. This would have been a fine streaming movie. And, and, and I feel like now that movie theaters are being opened up again and now that big movies are, 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 coming, out, are coming out again, I, I, th I feel like we got really used to the streaming platform and we can now identify, okay, this is a fine movie to watch on streaming. This is a good movie to watch in theaters. Like, yeah. I'll watch any Marvel superhero movie in theaters. Like, I want to. Uh, big movies, I do want to see them. But there are movies that I feel like, you know what? I would prefer to watch this at home. Yeah. Like, uh, like for example, remember, remember uh, Enola Holmes? Remember that movie? Yes. That one was fun. I don't know if I would have uh, if I would have paid to see it in theaters. I liked seeing it on Netflix. Um, that was a that was a perfect streaming film. No, I think you're right. It, it's it's a smaller scale, but that's I miss small scale films. And yeah. so, if I can only get small scale films at home, I'll take it. Like I want low stakes, good story, character driven films rather than these big epic blockbusters. I think you're right. Yeah, no, and and you know, not, not an insult to the to the epic fat blockbuster. You know, we're coming into the summer. That is that is fat epic bl blockbuster prime time. Um, but there are movies that I feel like would be better. I, I feel the same about this one, and I feel the same about that uh, that bullet train movie that that's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a mistake to release in the theaters. I feel like that that that, that should be a streaming movie. Uh, that movie is also gonna have Brad Pitt and Sandra Bullock. So wait, what bullet train's got Sandra Bullock in it? Yeah, she's like the one that's giving him the missions. Really? Oh, well, yeah. I wonder if they did each other a favor. Like, hey, I'll I'll come up on this, but I need you to come out over here. Maybe because hmm. I think she produced this. So is Sandra Bullock single? I don't know. I know Brad Pitt know. is, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he is at the moment. I don't know if she is. Hashtag uh, Sandra Pitt. Hashtag. <laughs> oh, you want Brad them to? Oh, 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 you're you're, you're shipping them. Is this, is this what you're yeah, saying? why not? They're both a little older, a little wiser. They both have uh, chil already have uh, children. You know what? I, uh, I see it. I see it. That might actually be the strongest power couple in Hollywood. Now that I think about it, <laughs> that would be—I don't know—it would be—it would be pretty, pretty worrisome. I saw. Did you saw the thing that like apparently she's she's like she's been stalked like 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 a lot of times. Like she's had like a lot of people like stalking her. I believe she's a very stalkable person. For the purposes of you know future <laughs> things, that was a joke. That that was a joke, folks. You know, I'm, say, I, I'm trying to say she has, she has a very reasonable personality. Like, I, I'm saying she's a cool person. I'm not saying she should be stalked. Like, I'm not saying that, folks. This whole podcast is a joke. It, this is one it's big not joke. not to be taken seriously. Yeah, look, look, uh, at, yeah. You, look at my hair. Like, this, we, they, they, they can't see your hair. This see, it's a joke. Your... See, it's a joke. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Um, well... Is there well besides uh, besides Sandra Bullock thing? Do you think there's something else that you didn't like, or like is it mostly just on her? It's it's all on her. Like on, uh, like there are moments. Um, I always refer to uh, like Corella, for example, right? Emma Stone carried that film on her back, and she succeeded. Sandra Bullock tried to carry this film on her back, and like she broke her heel on the way. Jesus. Um, I'm sorry. It's just god damn it. I know she's better than this, and that's what's more frustrating. Is she's relatively dependable. I can't think too often of a film that she's like um uh, Keanu Reeves. I can't remember the last time that he did a movie that I didn't find entertaining, you know. Sandra mm -hmm. Bullock is a very dependable actress, so the fact that this was like such a fall through, damn it. All right, man. Uh I get you. I don't agree. I think she's. I think she does good in the movie. Um, but ah, I get you. I get. I get where you're coming from. Um, I feel like I, I did enjoy the movie. I feel like I would watch it again if I'm having like if I find the time or something. If it's on streaming, I I, I probably wouldn't watch this in theaters again. Um, yeah. But I I had a good time, especially because I feel like the past the past weeks. God, I just, I, I feel like I haven't seen, like, good stuff. I feel like <laughs> between Morbius and Fantastic Beast, uh, The Northman, I thought was, like, the closest thing that I got to, like, a pretty all right movie. But I feel like uh, it's it's been, like, going, 
not very good. Yeah. Do you, what do you want to record next? You want to do something like, what, what do you have in mind? Well, next week is Doctor Strange. So I feel like that has to be the next target. Am I going to be able to watch it? I should be. Able to I have t- I have tickets already for Thursday. Like I'm, I'm ready. I'm Jesus. I'm, yeah. Hell yeah. I think we should be able to. Yeah. Fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll probably check it out like a Saturday morning or something, or maybe Sunday morning. Right. Jesus. I'll figure something all out. Right. Fuck it. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and we'll, we'll, we'll get on that. But hopefully, you know, now that the summer season has started, we're going to get some pretty, pretty good, heavy, heavy stuff. So some better goddamn films. Some better goddamn films. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because I feel like we've been, you know, up and down, up and down. Yeah. How much do you know about Doctor Strange going into it? Like, how much do you know about the characters and all that? I read, uh, I read one of the, I read like one of the main comics. I think it was called The Curse or something. Uh, so I know I'm, I'm familiar with Doctor Strange and, you know, I've seen the movie, I've seen all subsequent material. Um, so I'm good on that. Next week also is the end of Moon Knight. I, I, I don't know if you're watching that one. Yes! yes okay. Dude, episode five. Episode five was good. Um, there's one episode left, so if you want, we can also do a review on that one. Completely um, done. Yeah. Um, because I feel like that... I, I don't think it's going to tie into, but they haven't done anything to tie it into the rest of the Marvel Universe, and I feel like that's the first Marvel series to not mm-hmm. uh, reference something. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll see how that connects with everything else. Um, but yeah, it's mostly mostly that we're gonna we're gonna start getting getting some heavy stuff with that. Finally, yeah. All right, uh, yeah. Uh, did we give grades? Final thoughts? Anything? Uh, I thought it was enjoyable. I, I, mean, I, I I'm I'm not gonna complain about a funny movie. Okay, <laughs> like it's. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, I was totally disappointed. I was not like this. All this movie needed to be was was fun and dumb and loud. And it was funnish, loudish and dumbish. So that's that's enough. That, that, that that's enough for this for this guy. So I give it a I give it a seven out of ten. You know, I can't believe I'm going to say this. This film does the worst thing that Chema says any film can do for me. It's be boring. boring. Yeah, that's boring. All right. I quoted you actually in, in one of my video reviews. I don't remember which one. I know. I saw. Which one? Which episode was it? The... I don't remember, but I saw them. Every time you post them, I'm, I'm the first guy that sees them. Hey, thank you for the support, pal. Yeah. I mean, we're in the same boat, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, this film does, to quote Chema, the, the worst thing a film can be, and it's it's boring. Oh, God, F. F plus? It's not purposeful. I'm... It's not purposefully bad, but it's just not good. If we balance out my score and your score, we get an average of like a, like C. a C, like a, yeah. like, a like a five. So that's well, not and, terrible. And that's a C, as in go see it. Good. Oh god, that, that's a C, as in go check out some other film, not this one. Not if you love your, not if you love yourself. If you hate yourself, watch this film. Oh my god. Yeah, go ahead and insult the audience while you're at it. <laughs> Uh, we'll see you next week, folks. <laughs> All right. My name is Shema. Uh, I've been Eddie. And this is was the Roba. With a reminder. To, you know, always, always wear sunscreen. You know, these characters could have benefited from that. I'm not saying they, everything could have been avoided, but, you know, wear sunscreen That's every time you go outside. That's to keep also, when, moisturized. When, also, weird when you're inside because you don't realize that the UV light from your computer is doing shit to your skin. So Does it? It does. Oh God! Is that why I have all these wrinkles? Jesus! No, I'm not not gonna lie. Like I work from home, like staring at a computer, and I wear UV light glasses, like when I'm working. God damn, Gemma. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> why do you think my skin is so smooth? I've never touched your skin. Well, you'll Bye, see. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs>